Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens video. So actually, we did end up getting some more information about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, some very minor information, I do want to say right off the bat, in this month's V-Jump. The early leaks were kind of indicating that we were not going to get anything about Sevens, but yesterday there was an article posted, a bit of a translation, and we did learn a few more interesting details from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens page in this month's V jump over in Japan now the way it was set up is we got a little bit of a bio on the ace monsters of the characters Yuga and Luke the two main characters I would say right now at least in the early stages of sevens and we got the voice actors of Luke Yuga Roman the girl lead and Gakuto, the four characters that we have already been introduced to in the trailer and that we've already had the bios on. I'm not going to really go over much of that because they're very small comments by the voice actors just basically saying that they know Yu-Gi-Oh! is a huge brand, they're happy to be participating in Yu-Gi-Oh!, they're happy to be um, doing Yu-Gi-Oh! and having a role in a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, and a lot of them do mention the 20th anniversary of the anime, so that clearly is still a big talking point that is being advertised to us even after the massive changes from the first six Yu-Gi-Oh shows and sevens in the art style in maybe even the direction but this still is being billed as a 20th anniversary show but at the very end of this article on YGO organization we got the story summary revealed and while most of it I'd say about 80% of it is stuff we already knew it expands on stuff we already knew and talks about some new elements which I'm going to be quickly giving my thoughts on and hopefully discussing with you guys down below so here we go the story summary revealed Odo Yuga, who attends Goha 7th Elementary, is a 5th grader who spends his time following his own road, inventing inventions he calls roads. Yuga, fed up with the stifling rules adults have placed on duels, creates new rules that let you go all out in a duel from the very start. However, Yuga finds he's unable to install the data needed for these new duels into his duel desk. Yuga's tried to install them plenty of times, but he keeps running out of time and gets penalized. But then one day, Rook, and I do want to actually stop myself there, um, it could be that Luke's name or nickname is Rook. That's who they're referring to, the, the blue-haired kid. Uh, the reason that they're not sure is because when translating kanji, it can be a little tricky because a way that a word is spelt could mean a couple different things, which is why in Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, we had a character named Blood Shepherd, but before Blood Shepherd actually spoke or was called Blood Shepherd in the show, he was referred to as Brad Shepard in the summaries because that's one of the ways that you could have translated his name. So it might be Luke, it might be Rook. We're really just going to have to wait until the show starts to see, but that's who they're referring to in this sentence. But then one day Rook or Luke, the self-proclaimed number one duelist of Goha 7th Elementary, stops Yuga while he's on the way to his lab and tells him about the rumor of a king of duels. What awaited the curious boys when they arrived at a major monument was a mysterious person. And then I imagine and this mysterious person says try if you dare and see if you are worthy of becoming a king of duels if he could just install his new rules Yuga would be recognized as a king but if he installs them he'll have to beat his opponent within a limited amount of time and then Yuga says in that case I'll rush duel the road I invented Yuga and Rook these two young boys are about to begin their story as they try to change a stuffy suffocating world with a brand new way of dueling. Based on the information we previously got, I was under the impression, and I think most of us were, that Yuga was able to create this new style of dueling without any issues whatsoever. So this is more realistic. Yuga is a fifth grader, uh, he's got a lab, so to a degree he's got to be a very smart 11 year old. Reminds me maybe a little bit of like a Jimmy Neutron <laughs> when I read that he's going back to his lab. Because when I read that he has a lab, I was like, geez, this kid is more intelligent and driven than I am, and I'm freaking 25. <laughs> but even, even with that said, I, I, this is more realistic, right? Going through anything in life, trying to accomplish anything, there's always trial and error involved. So I'm glad it's not right off the bat, Yuga's able to create a new dueling method because then it's like, well, why didn't anyone else try and do this? So there are roadblocks in getting this dueling style approved. And when he tries to, I guess, hack into his dual disc, there's like a security on that dual disc and there's a time limit to get that installed. In fact, we see an image, I went back and watched the trailer, we see an image where it looks like 
there is a timer behind Yuga. That might be the timer. It's something that Gokuto is actually like clamoring at and Luke is also in the scene. It's right before Roman makes her appearance in the trailer. And maybe what you see on screen right now is a timer. It's like a security droid because it senses that the dual disc is being hacked into. I'm not really sure, but whenever Yuga tries to install them, he runs out of time and he gets penalized. I don't know what that penalty is. I don't know if it's the government, if it's Goha Corporation, like actually fining him or trying to get him in trouble. That doesn't really make too much sense because he's an 11 year old kid. So I doubt he's, you know, in, you know, it'd be different if this character was like 16, 17, because then, all right, maybe they're actually trying to arrest this kid for trying to hack into a dual desk. And maybe that's like a huge <laughs> issue in, in the city of Goha. I mean, who really knows? But because Yuga is 11, that's probably not what it is. I, so I don't know what the, the penalization is. The other interesting aspect of this is if this is a new style that Yuga is trying to create, and maybe only Yuga has cards for, then how again does this Kaiba-esque character in the trailer have Rush Duel cards? So that's another interesting thing about this. Is this character, dare I say, a time traveler from a universe where Rush Duels actually do exist and Yuga does succeed in creating this format, or is this a situation where maybe when a Rush Duel begins, all of your regular cards can turn into Rush Duel cards, and this is a character that has a normal deck, but now has access to Rush Duel cards because of the style that Yuga challenges him to. The other aspect is Yuga needs to defeat this character to be recognized as a king, but he needs to beat his opponent within a limited amount of time. So why is there a time limit on all of this? So the big theme here is that everything Rush Duel related seems to be a race against time, which is actually kind of funny because when you think about Rush Duels, you think about a crazy quick, crazy fast, crazy spammy style of dueling, and that might have to legitimately be the case because there's a time limit whenever a Rush Duel takes place. Rush Duel commences, you have 10 minutes to duel, and you have to beat your opponent in that period of time, and if you lose, Yuga's the one that's probably going to get penalized, and not his opponent, at least in this case, because he's the one that installed the program, and the program's going to fail, and then the duel is just going to end without a winner. So there's an interesting theme here that you're rushing to get victory, and that's why the duels are called Rush Duels. You are rushing to win the duel and Yuga versus the clock, Yuga versus society, they're all going to be themes in this show. The whole concept of it intrigues me. It does, uh, as someone who has watched Yu-Gi-Oh! since the very beginning, uh, it reminds me a lot of kind of what was happening in Duelist Kingdom, where in Duelist Kingdom and very early Yu-Gi-Oh!, before Yu-Gi-Oh! was Yu-Gi-Oh!, you could just do whatever the hell you wanted in card games, and I feel like this is kind of paying homage to the early stages of what the Yu-Gi-Oh card game was, where you could kind of create your own rules, you could make your own effects, and I really do like it from that perspective, because if it's gonna be a 20th anniversary, you hope that they're going to somehow honor the older shows and the older styles, and this to me is honoring the older style to a degree, in the sense of it's a young kid creating their own rules. It reminds me of when we were all young, when Yu-Gi-Oh first came out in, in fifth, fourth grade in elementary school and we would just slap down blue eyes white dragon and, and make up crazy effects i know i dueled with my brother so many times in his room just making up crazy effects and crazy stories and to a degree this kind of brings me back to that so i do enjoy it from that perspective and it's young kids it's young society versus adults who are all set in their ways who are maybe so hard-headed that they don't realize change might be better for a community, their community, for Goha, for society, and we see that in the real world all the time, so that even kind of plays into real world themes where, you know, the old saying that kids have the creativity and adults have no creativity because they're so used to doing the same monotonous thing for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and change scares a lot of people, especially if you are a 50-year-old, stable individual who has a family, who owns a house, who has had a pretty successful life, you don't really want to change anything. You don't really want to take risks. When you're young, even when you're my age, take risks, be innovative, be creative, and that's kind of what the whole theme of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s is, and I do enjoy it from that perspective quite a bit. 
We don't have any more news on sevens. We're not going to get any more news until probably this time in February or this time in March. I expect in February we probably will get who's going to do the opening and ending. That's at least when we got Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains' opening announcement and their cast. But of course, we know the cast and staff that is working on Seven. So I guess we will have to wait and see for more information. But guys, let me know all your thoughts about this article. Let me know if any of the voice actor interviews were interesting to you or there was anything that caught your attention. And let me know what you think of this story summary. And now that we are a month removed from the initial announcement of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, let me know where you stand. Are you going to watch the show? Are you going to watch a few episodes, give it a chance? And then if you don't like it, drop it, which is perfectly fine. Any of these options are perfectly fine. Or are you just going to not watch the show at all, which again, perfectly fine option if it does not appeal to you. Excited to hear your thoughts on Sevens now a month after the announcement down below. A special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, Horace May, Goosey Q, Vincent Vanderveen, Panther J, Smith620, Jorge Leone, Blue Maiden28, Jared Bueller, and Gabe G. And to my diamond tier patrons, Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, Sean, Melinda Phantom. And to my Egyptian god tier patrons, Joss Rivers and Sin Cloud. Huge thank you to everyone who is a YouTube channel member and who is a Patreon. I cannot tell you how much it truly helps me out. And thank you to everyone who just watches these videos. Without you guys, I would not be able to do this. Thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you down below. And I hope you have an amazing day.